Yeah, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. This is Community Matters on Think Tech. And we have Mihao Novitsky, uh, and he is the leader of Carol's Carolers. And, and we have had some, what do you want to say, contact with Carol's Carol Carolers over the past, what, three years now? And so we're getting to know them pretty well, only at Christmas, though. <laughs> and they've been very kind to us. They've come to our Christmas gatherings, and, and they've sung in groups. And and this year, because it's um, it's been virtual, um, they gave us their product as, as three separate videos. One was Silent Night, one was Come All You Faithful, and the third was Joy to the World. And we are so we are so joyous to have them. Welcome, Mihal. Thank you for having me. Yeah, great to see you. So um, so we're going to play uh, Come All You Faithful first. I'm sorry, we're going to play Joy to the World first. And we'll play the others uh, down line in the show here. But can you give us a little background on, on how you put this together? Because this is an extraordinary video. Right. So uh, actually, we, you know, we had to interrupt our spring season when COVID struck. And that was really sad for us. Uh, we were just getting you know, our post-Christmas wind in the sail, so to speak, and um, uh, you know, ready to go with a program. Uh, you know, we were thinking even on starting on some, you know, repertoire that we might want to present this coming summer. We were hoping to do a little carolers trip um, outside of Hawaii. And, uh, you know, so we were really excited about it. And then, of course, you know, we, we decided to stop rehearsing and stop meeting. Um, and, and, and soon after, of course, there was a whole buzz about, oh, you know, making music virtually and doing it together via Zoom. And, and a lot of enthusiasm behind it. And of course, you know, really quickly, everyone found out that, wait a second, it's not quite this easy. <laughs> no, not easy at all, yeah. <laughs> and there's a whole tech side to it that most, uh, you know, musicians did not train, you know, and, 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 you know, everyone has a little bit of know-how how to do things. I think technology has advanced and, and made it more accessible for a lot of people, but it still took, Quite a bit of tinkering to figure it out but actually in that spring um uh my brother cattle who is the, the musical director of the group I'm, I'm i'm in the shadows running the logistics most of the time but he really is you know the well the namesake of the group and and the person who who, who put it all together um you know he he laid down some tracks for a couple of uh you know secular non-christmas songs for our spring season and and we just wanted to do an experiment and see how we could adapt and do it. And there were just too many challenges for us at that time. And uh, I don't know if you remember, but I think at that time we all kind of thought that, oh, maybe this will just kind of come and go in a couple of weeks. And uh, <laughs> sure. And, and of course it didn't. So as, as week after week and month after month passed, um, you know, I think everyone in the group was getting more and more starved for music. So kind of the motivation to do something increases. And, and with that, I think the willingness to, to take some risks, to, to, to try something new. And uh, actually it was the, your email, Jay, that, that, um, you know, um, that I sneakily used as leverage for our group, you know, said, well, our friends at ThinkTech are having a virtual <laughs> holiday party and they would like us to sing for them. So what do you say? We, we do it. And, and, and at that point, everyone, this was, uh, I am not kidding you. This, this was the fastest response we've received from everyone. I think at the time we had 13, 13 members. The membership changes a little bit every year. And within 24 hours, We've got 13 yeses, which, which <laughs> never happened before. And then, and then, of course, okay, well, I guess we'll have to figure out how to do it exactly. And uh, well, and I hope that that you know we we um, we managed to put something together. Oh, you did! It's beautiful. You know, in the past, we've done um, similar call, call it COVID chorales with Chamber Music Hawaii and with the Music School at UH. And the difference, uh, I might add, and I'm going to ask you about this, the difference is Chamber Music Hawaii recorded it separately and then edited the pieces one on top of the other. Um, the music school uh, played at the same time. 
um, and they managed to play over the web using Zoom, which was really very hard to do. I'm sure you went through that. So, but which me method did you use? Did you record it separately one by one, one person by one person, or did you record it all together on Zoom? Right. So um, with Zoom, we, the issue of the delay and you know, the network speeds and latency and all that stuff was, uh, was, was too much. And, um, and uh, you know, because of, of I think the diff varying levels of tech savvy between you know, the members, as you would expect, um, you know, we decided to try to facilitate the process by actually bringing, creating a little studio in a, in a, in a, in a separated, you know, section of, uh, of our house and bringing people one by one on a, you know, on a, on a, on a, on a schedule. And, you know, you would have one person or two people come maybe in a day, we'd have half an hour in between to sanitize everything and, 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 and stuff like that. And that seemed to, to help quite a bit because then what we're really asking from the singer is, 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 to, is to focus on the music. And then they get the track in advance. These, the carols that we picked for this specific uh, you know, season were ones that we sang, of course, in the past. So they were a little um, easier to manage. Of course, the big challenge with, with choral singing is that um, you, know, you are constantly tuning to the other people that you're singing with. So unlike you know, the piano where you press the key and the note comes out, there is, there's an intricate connection between the ear and the voice and, and kind of trying to create a blend. So you're not really just singing with your own voice, you're trying to produce this ethereal sound in front of everyone. And that's extremely difficult to do, to do by yourself. So it took a little bit of time. We did send a practice track for everyone to familiarize themselves with singing just their part you know, their harmony part, unless you're a soprano, then you get to sing the melody. That's why everyone <laughs> always rags on sopranos a little bit. But, um, you know, and once, once they came in, having practiced that, we, 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 we had a little setup with a microphone and light so they would not be encumbered by it. They listened to the track for, uh, you know, for the rhythm to, to keep maintain a steady rhythm, which of course is critical. Uh, you know, in this production, and 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 we recorded, you know, a few a few takes, and then when the singer was just like, okay, I feel like I finally shook off my cold feet. I feel pretty good about this. Um, uh, you know, we 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 take a break and um, and do another Christmas carol in the same way, and another one, and then we we roughly, um, you know, scheduled a, a two hour window for a for for a singer and. Uh, it's it's a quite involved process and it's very fatiguing and uh, and it's very uncomfortable to do it. You know, I, I had to do it too, and I have to admit I you know um, I do not have as much uh, musical training and background as a lot of the singers in the group. Um, so for me, it was absolutely nerve wracking to be there in front of the camera, in front of the mic, and now <laughs> sing your part by yourself. And and you know cross your fingers and hope for the best. So, um, uh, you know, and and what helped tremendously too is that Tattle, uh is a uh, you know music director at Saint Clement's, and he's been doing a virtual choir uh, you know services uh, in a, in, a, in a similar way. He's working every week. To produce musical tracks ahead of time for the for the church choir, he he sends them out, and the choir members at home practice and record without video, you know their their parts and and they're put together and uh, and and so he had a little bit of that experience. I've um, I've dabbled a little bit in in in, in theater myself, so uh, we kind of put what we had together and and and. You know, and uh, I think we were, we were all pleasantly surprised with what came out. Oh, and, and we were delighted. Let me ask you one more question before we actually watch uh, the first one, Joy to the World. <clears throat> but, um, you know, when a given singer was singing, could that singer hear the others who have already sung? Um, the, how did you get him on pitch? Um, he was, I guess, wearing, uh, or she, wearing a, a, a headphones and he was, mm -hmm. or she was listening to something. What was he or she listening to at the time 
uh, he was singing. Right. So we actually, within our small bubble in our house, we do have uh, five singers and we had five parts, uh, you know, or five voices. So we were able to create the four, uh, four part track uh, together. And it was, you know, it was imperfect and it, 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 it was not a track that we would want to, you know, necessarily produce. But in the time frame that we had to work, we decided to, 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 to use that as the baseline to, so that singers, as they sing, they're aware where they are, what the, what the rhythm is. And, 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 and everyone then has this one common track to which, you know, they, they align their uh, I see, I see. So you them. don't use it in the end but you use it as a way to stimulate the one singer that you are recording at that time. Right, right. So that was kind of a guide for them. And, um, and, we, and we kept that, we used the same, same track uh, for everyone uh, without adding or laying our additional voices till we actually had all of them recorded. And then once we put those voices together, that's the, uh, that's the final product that, that you can hear. Brilliant. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna listen now to Joy to the World, one of your various uh, uh, carols. And then when we get done, you and I will examine it retrospectively and see what we can learn. Because this is a new technology that's being developed. And I, I suggest uh, you're gonna see more and more of this, not only by carols carolers, but other, other groups as well. Okay, let's hear it now. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature, and heaven and nature sing. 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 Joy to Yeah, Miho, anytime you want to make a movie for Think Tech, you let me know. Because that, you know, that was, that was so sophisticated, the way you handled all that, those windows. Those are not necessarily Zoom windows. You had to edit them together in, those, in that particular uh, organization. Um, the sound was really, really good. And um, the way you set it up uh, for the bumpers at the beginning and the end. Um, so th that was you, right, Miho? Um, so... Yes, <laughs> you know, most of most of the video editing, um, you know, I've I've tried to experiment with different, uh, you know, programs and um, and uh, I know there there new web based um, you know apps that can help you with that and there's you know of course a plethora of apps on the on the iPhone but. Um, in the end, I end up downloading a free trial of um, Final Cut Pro and had to do a little crash course on that. And it was the only uh, 
you know, once you end up adding one video, another video, third video, fourth, and you have to have 13 videos of, you know, decent resolution on the screen and, um, you know, Final Cut for me was the only one that uh, did not, so to speak, poop out under the, the, under the pressure of that, even though my computer shut down several times <laughs> during the process. Unfortunately, it, everything was saved every time. So I have to say, you know, I was very, I was very happy with, with how that turned out, even though it was quite frustrating, <laughs> you know, when, when everything is turtle speed and as you're juggling so many videos, of course, that's something that uh, I think nobody imagined that it, it, it would be, uh, you know, so, so, so heavy, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, welcome to the world of video editing. It's, it's always like that. I'm telling you, you know, they, they, these products come out and say, oh yeah, it's easy. Mm, there's always issues, always, no matter what, because the resources don't necessarily work together. So yeah. how did you, you did color correction because all the, all the singers look really terrific and they all had the same kind of color in them. Um, and, and of course you, you, you got the levels of the sound just right. Um, and you synchronize the sound so that it was really perfect. Uh, that must've been, a, you must be a past master at Final Cut Pro now, eh? <laughs> not, not even close. I, I wish, but I have to say that each editing, each carol, we started with Joy to the World and when, you know, Come All Is Faithful and, and Silent Night and, um, uh, working on each carol was so much easier than working on the previous one because the process is, 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 is quite long and arduous and I think you pick up so many things. And, uh, you know, having said that, I don't think it would have been possible for just one person to, to do it. And, and actually the, the lining up of the, of the music was done with, um, you know, by Karol himself. And uh, bulk of it actually was done by our soprano, Brittany Alexander. Um, you know, who attentively listened to every single track and made sure that, uh, you know, it, it lines up. Uh, what I didn't realize uh, is, is how, how, how much the, you know, the, the synchronizing, um, how sensitive it is. And when, when we speak to each other, we speak over the phone, we don't realize that these delays are there and we're perfectly fine with that. When you're putting sounds together, you know one one tenth of a second is is audible and 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 throws off the harmony. So getting things to you know one one twentieth of a second, you know point zero five, and and those kind of precisions. And of course, we couldn't catch all of it, and it was impossible. But Brittany did an absolutely outstanding job. Uh, you know, Carol did a bunch of work and and, and polish, and we also got some consultations from from uh, one of our tenors, Bo Souza. Uh, who, who had some experience working with GarageBand. He's uh, teaching choir at St. Andrew's Priory. So he also was experimenting with different, with different ways to do it. And, and um, yeah, it was, it was really a, a, a caroler village effort to put it all together. And of course, it wouldn't be possible without all the singers being willing to, you know, despite the times and these difficulties and how, you know, nerve wracking this process is, uh, you know, to, to give it their best and, 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 uh, and make it happen. Yeah. And they had to record more than once and to get it to a point where you wanted it. Am I right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's funny because you, when you see the product, it's like, oh, well, they just lined up right there and you press the, <laughs> the, the record button and it came out just the way it did. And, and, and no, you know, there was, of course, of course, there's always a, a uh, one take when you realize, oh, the microphone was not on. Sorry about it. Let's do it one more time. Or you know, when you hear and it's a little too loud. We, where we recall, you know, we're we're at an intersection of 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 uh, of at least one loud street. So every single time, you know, there if there's a ambulance or 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 a fire truck coming by, even um, even the postman, you know, it's it it makes it makes a big difference. You know, right now it's. <laughs> It, 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 it's 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 not so much when you have a Zoom call or talk to um, talk to someone over the phone, but when you're recording with a with a microphone that you know is is going to catch the sound, uh, uh, you know, it's going to catch everything. So yeah, so, so, so some questions then, uh, you know, from the editing point of view, um, did, did you? I, I assume you you work the levels, the sound levels, so that they be consistent. It's 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 almost like 
conducting the thing um, in, a, in, a, in a classical format because you can't control everything or almost everything. So qu question, did you, did you have to lengthen or shorten the duration of a given uh, singer and to match the others? You know, you can do that on, on, on video editing um, just by a few frames, you know, to, in order to synchronize it, make sure that they were perfectly aligned. Did you ever have to do that? Um, so I, I, I didn't. I, I, I worked with a video. I know that uh, Brittany and Carol, uh, sometimes there would be, you know, an adjustment that you want to make because they, the virtue of aligning 13 voices together and there always will be some imperfection in, 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 in just the alignment process itself. So, you know, maybe, you know, everyone can be still on rhythm, but because the, there are no visual cues for singers to initially, you know, all of them cut off, it can be, you know, you get, you know, at the end of, uh, end of a word. And, and, and so you can, in post-production, as you said, you can minimize that. So you can, you can fade out a little bit of that. And, and so you have, you end up with a slightly cleaner sound. Um, but uh, for the most part, you know, those are just very small things that you can fix and you really have to have, uh, you know, proper track to, 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 to have that. And, you know, maybe we could do more magic if we had 30 or 60 singers, but with 13 singers on, on, on four parts, you're, you know, it's pretty tight. Yeah, sure. There's no room for error. So <clears throat> what about uh, the waveforms, you know, on the, on the, on the final cut um, graphical screen? Um, with the waveforms, you can tell, you know, when the levels are up, down, and so forth. Um, and as I recall, Final Cut also comes with a concomitant program on, on sound. So you can take the waveform, put it in the sound program, fix it up, use various effects on it, put it back, you know, return trip back to uh, Final Cut. Did you go through that kind of editing pr process? So again, thankfully, I did not handle that. So again, it was Brittany. Uh, and cattle, and they use uh, a different program called Audacity, um, in which you, it's very similar, you know, we work with the waveforms as well, and that helps you figure out, okay, well, we captured that singer, you know, at this level, and this singer at that level, and of course, um, because of the frequencies at which they sing, you know, you will have sopranos, again, you know, sing out a little more, and, and different parts have, you know, are a little less, so in, in, in this setting, when you record, you really have no way to adjust the volumes, you know, live. So you have to do it in post-production, you know, so to make sure that the harmonies sure. are balanced. And so they use that. Um, we, we experimented with the placement of the microphone in, you know, in our little studio uh, to see what we can, we can get. We did want to, uh, you know, get a sound that is a little more resonant, that, that uses the ambience of, of the room, um, doesn't just sound like somebody singing over the phone to you, uh, you know, doesn't sound like, like a happy like birthday greeting, you know, if we, we found over. So, um, so, so, so we tried to make that, what, ha what ended up happening is that the volume levels were, 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 were low as we moved the mic, you know, away from the singers, which in retrospect, I think we should play around with that a little bit more. And because of that, the gain on the microphone had to be higher, which in turn, you know, would pick up, you know, um, external uh, sounds, external sure. External yeah. sounds all the time. Yeah. So, and of course we, we, we don't have the means to soundproof, you know, the, the room. So it would be a perfect studio. Um, so of course, so the levels will adju were adjusted after that. And um, I think there might've been um, uh, uh, one of the, the sound effects or, or, um, or settings change to, to have, um, to make it seem like there's a medium size or a larger room. So there's yes, a little right. of yeah. that, of the, of that sound that of course, you know, that's, that's produced. I'm not sure if synthetically is the right word, but, but in post-production and, uh, and does not reflect the room in which the singers are singing, but produces the kind of sound that I think if we had 13 singers and you were, uh, in the audience in a live audience, it, this should be closer to what you would be experiencing. So what size of room did you pick? Um, I think uh, the room that uh, I'm in right now actually is about 
Oh, I forget. We measured at some point. I think it's about 20 feet by by maybe 15 feet or so. So it's a, a, a decent sized room, and it has slightly higher ceilings than you know your 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 normal apartment, and has a wooden floor. Um, and so when you do sing in this space as a singer, you 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 get a little bit of 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 so to speak, you know, feedback. Of about how you sound and you can make some adjustments to it but it doesn't it didn't translate to you know the sound uh to the microphone the way we we anticipated it, it would so it turns out um more research is needed on our end on the, with, with that and maybe yeah. maybe use of the you know the, the the tools that there are to 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 make to make the sound um you know more authentic yeah. Did you? Did you? Uh, one last technical question. Did you? Mm. Did you have to or want to or think about changing the pitch of a given? You know, because the technology can do that just by a little half step. You know, quarter step, something. Um, did you have to do that, or were they all on pitch anyway, and there was no need? No, I think for um, for all the tracks that we end up using, um, the singers were on pitch. That so of course you know it's it's very difficult again in, in an isolated setting to to do it. So when I was singing, I know for a fact I was staring at my brother who was by the camera with the mic, and he's just like, mm, "You're you're going flat, fade <laughs> up a little bit." And then in the end, we end up not using that take. <laughs> you know, it's like you guys listen, it's like, "Yeah, well, that's 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 not okay." You know, it doesn't it doesn't you know? Of course, if you're making as a group, you want. Um, you want something that's going to once once you put it out in the interwebs, you know, it's gonna stay there. So you want it to be representative of what the group is 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 capable of. You know, we have we have a number of outtakes, and so if any carolers are watching, it's coming your way. It's gonna be a little little inside circle for us to 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 remind us of, I think, very appropriate of, of what our 2020 season looks like and you know and all the trials and tribulations that we went through before being able to put out yeah. the, you know a virtual mini concert so to speak I, I don't i don't think you're over with this i think this is uh, you've invented something not only for yourselves uh, you know the carolers but also for other groups to see and emulate you mentioned um you know that uh, they were going to do carols outside the, the christmas season <laughs> <laughs> what what is that like? Uh, you have to you have to pick your work to sound like a Christmas carol, or what is a carol <laughs> in that context? No, so you know it, it was it was a um, of course it's a long standing joke within the group that we do caroling outside the Christmas season. We uh, you know for a number of years we've only done uh, concerts around Christmas time, and that was the original uh, you know thought behind the group. Uh, both Carol and I when we were we moved from uh, Poland to New York 20 years ago in August, you know, 2000. And we, in within a year or two, you know, we, we both joined, uh, we jo joined choir in high school. Uh, we were inspired by the story of our parents actually in their 20s at the University of Warsaw. They were studying mathematics, um, but met, you know, uh, through choir mostly. Our father was a tenor and of course, as you know, jolly tenors tend to do, they flirt with the sopranos, which our mom was a soprano, so he was standing right behind her and blowing at the back of her neck, you know, until she married him. You know? <laughs> what a wonderful story. <laughs> so, you know, so in, in our teens, of course, you know, the boys from Poland were like, we're joining choir. That's a, that's a lesson right there. And, and you know, and we, we um, uh, I think we owe to, to our voice teachers, you know, Edwin and Susan Lubin from New York, um, who organized Christmas caroling, and we still use a lot of their arrangements that we used with them. We call them, you know, uh, affectionately uh, picture carols because they have beautiful pictures and and are the, you know, uh, are the simple settings of of, of popular carols that uh, really resonate with us and and I think our singers. Uh, outside of the Christmas season, you know, we we decided um, I think first maybe in two thousand. 14 or 15 to do, you know, to a, do a spring concert and we introduced some, you know, Italian, you know, uh, magicals and some Renaissance music and some, some medieval, uh, you know, type, type music, so early music, essentially. Um, and, and as time progressed, we, we introduced some, um, 
uh, some some more recent arrangements of of, uh, of popular classical songs and and played around with that. So so to have a and then essentially it came because there was um, you know so much energy around the holidays, the Christmas time, and once we uh, kind of the bubble burst around New Year's, of course, when 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 we stop when we stop singing, everyone's like, wait, what, what are we doing now, right? We everyone in the group. You know, once, once really wants to sing a, a year long, and I think that's what, what's so special about about this group. Yeah, oh, that's wonderful. I'm I'm learning so much about you and the group, and I'm I'm so impressed, and I'm so happy that you're here in Hawaii. You're you're a resource, um, a fantastic resource going forward. I know we're going to see a lot more of you, but I I have one more question uh, before we get back to the music as such, um, and that is, you know. Do you think it's possible from the experience you've had in putting these videos together to do them remotely? I mean, you've got to have the best sound possible. You've got to have the best broadband connection possible. But do you think it's possible from what you have learned here to, to create a group in various places uh, in the country, in the world, that could achieve the same kind of music? What do you think? Yeah, I, I think it is possible. I think it's, you know, it's, it's difficult on many levels because of course, when you have, uh, you know, when you set it up the way we did, I think that there's uh, quite a bit of support that we're able to, to give each other. You know, even, even though one person is singing at a time, we're still kind of in it together. And, and, you know, we're taking care of the, of the physical recording of the setup of the lights and stuff like that. And if you do it purely remotely, then, um, you know, each person kind of has to set that up together is by themselves rather, um, which, which, which is a challenge. It's a little more work, I think, for everyone to do. And, and so you have to, uh, I think you have to have, uh, you know, special people and, and, and very special music enthusiasts and choral enthusiasts who are, who are willing to, 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 to kind of, screen their surroundings and, and, and experiment a little bit and decide, you know what, I really want to do this project. I can record this at home. And, um, and of course, you know, there's, uh, there, there's, there's a duality here. One part is the, is the sound, which you could, if you have a mic, you know, you could, you could record without the video. If you want to have a visual, uh, you know, to uh, accompany the music, then there's, you know, a slew of very different questions. Do you go for a uniform look? Do you do uh, kind of the raw Zoom look together? I think right now the technology is not there yet for for people to come simultaneously and and produce that. You know, let's do one take together. Let's do three takes together and pick the best one. Uh, I think I think we're not there yet, as far as I I can tell. It's coming. I know it's coming, and you'll you'll be a leader. What you've done is, is really remarkable, and I'm so happy to be the beneficiary of that. So uh, we, we're kind of out of time, Michal. Um, and what I'd like to do in view of the, the discussion we've had is to um, play Joy to the World one more time on the way out, OK? And then what I want to do is put, put Silent Night and Come All You Faithful. I want to put that in our overnight stream. And we'll play that again and again. If it's okay with you, we'll we'll make it our our Christmas statement in our overnight stream. But before we go, I just want to ask you, what should we be looking for as we see Joy to the World for the second time in this show? What should we be particularly conscious of? Well, let me just say, I think you you should close your eyes, open your ears, <laughs> and and enjoy and enjoy the music. I think. Um, you know, unless you're a, you're a techie enthusiast and you kind of want to really listen and see what, you know, little nuggets you can find in there, you know, go for it. But I think for most of us at this time, and I think especially this year, um, I think that Christmas carols and this season, um, you know, put us in a, help us find the serenity that I think that we need. And I think all of us deserve after a very long and, and, um, exhausting year so to speak yeah gee i i couldn't have said it better you're absolutely right on thank you so much Michal novitsky 
It's great to have you on the show and thank you again for the music you have provided. It is extraordinary and it has a great future here in Hawaii and, and elsewhere. Uh, aloha, aloha nui loa, okay? And now we're gonna, we're gonna go out on, on um, uh, joy to the world, being joyous about your music. Aloha. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature, and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world. Man.